Do you have a metric boatload of projects that are piling up? Do you like measuring and sorting by every single last detail that you can possibly think of? Do you hate working with data view? Can you ignore one tiny user experience detail that might be a potential deal breaker? If you answered yes to all of the above, then we have a plugin for you. Stay tuned to learn more. Hello and welcome. I have a really good one for you this time. I found this plugin in my search for making sense out of a lot of different ways that I wanted to be able to see my projects and things that I've got going on because I always want a whole lot of different ways to see the same information, but I don't love working in data view. And if you are a graphical user interface lover like I am, then this is probably the plugin for you. And without any further ado, let's get into it and then we'll have enough context to understand that one thing that drives me absolutely crazy, which might be a deal breaker for you, might be a deal breaker for me, and we'll find out by the end of this video. See you there. We are back into my demo vault and let's close out the daily notes and kind of start fresh and to do this we are going to go into community plugins browse for projects by marcus olson and install enable and i always like to do the options after i've had a chance to play around but there are some things that we do have to set up because i don't want you to have to eventually figure this out like I did. So we will create a new folder, call them projects. And this is something that you need to understand about the way that this plugin works is that all of your projects live in kind of the same place. And you want that to be this folder named projects. And, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. So I always like using the command palette. You know me, I'm a huge fan of hotkeys and using the keyboard for things. So that way I'm not having to go use the mouse and that kind of stuff. So we bring up projects and we could show projects and create new project. So let's just create new project and we'll dive right in. And we'll say, that we've got a YouTube example and set as default is when you choose to see projects and you don't have the projects open already, this will be the project that it defaults to. So it will always show you this one at startup. So whatever project or thing that you need to see most often and that is going to be your primary select this in the data source i i want it to be the folder i don't want it to pull in from tags but you can if you've got lots of information elsewhere and you want to pull it into a project because you've used tags to tag this as project x or whatever and for all of you data view gurus out there, you can use this as well. But I'm going to say folder and path to the folder you want to manage. How about that is projects. And if you wanted to keep this even more organized, you could create a subfolder and do it that way. Some more of the settings, locations for new notes, uh, new notes for each project. Well, we could do that and the default date, year, 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 month, month, day, day. That's how I like to do time already. So I'm just going to leave it that way. And for each of your projects, if you've got a standard format, then you would add your template for this project. Uh, say you've got book reports and you've you're working through those and you need to know the author, the genre, the ISBN, you want to know its Dewey Decimal number, well, you could put all of that into a template. And if you don't know how to work templates, 
I will try to remember to put that as a link right here in the video for you so that you can go watch my video on how to manage templates in Obsidian. And that's pretty much it for this. We'll figure the rest out as we go. So we create the project and I guess it doesn't automatically open it. So let's see, create new project, show projects. Yeah, okay, there we go. So it created it, but didn't show it. So in my head, I would have expected it to do this. So I don't know if that's just something goofy I'm doing or if it's something that the plugin doesn't do, but there you go. If that confuses you, hopefully this saves you a lot of time wondering if you did something wrong. Then you create another project on top of project on top of project before you figure that out. Now, this doesn't look like much, but it is really cool. Now, to find our way around a little bit, once you start building some of these, and let me get this out of the way so that we can see the whole thing. And once you start building multiple projects up here, this drop down is where you're going to filter through and cycle through all of your projects. You won't have to go through the file folders and then go find where it is. It's kind of like if you are working on your project with the projects plugin, you're going to do all of it from right here. You're not going back and forth anywhere. So you'll be selecting your projects from this drop down and using them all within this kind of interface. So that was another thing that took me a really embarrassing long time to figure out. But basically, this is where you start. And as most databases begin, it is a humble table view. And that's what's here in the center is that uh, the basic idea is that it's a, a table with a title and, all right, what are we going to name this particular element of the project? Let's, let's just say um, the... We'll call it the project plugin video. We'll get a little meta with it. So we'll say it's part of the YouTube example and we create the note and it has the name and the file path to begin with. And from here, using the properties, you can start to add different elements of it. So we can say uh, it's a topic and that will be a say a list right and we'll say productivity is the topic of this video and we'll add tags and we'll call it obsidian um, handy useful time saver all those kinds of things and then what day do we want it to uh, post or goes go live? We want that to be a date. Okay, cool. But also, we want to know what day we're going to film. And that can be a date as well. Um, so... At this point, I'm going to go ahead and give you the million dollar secret for productivity and managing projects. Uh, this, is, this is worth the price of admission alone. There's a big difference between due dates, the date you need this completed, and the date you're going to do the work you need to do. So that's a DO date. So the difference is that most people use DUE dates and then forget to allocate the time that you need in order to work on it so that it's done by the time you need to turn it in. So that's why DUE dates are going to leave you in a lurch, but DO dates 
make sure that you put time on your calendar and then when you see here's what I have to do today, there's no question I've got time blocked off. I'm going to do this and then that way I know it will be done for the date that it is due. So if you change your entire life to work with DO dates, you will be way farther ahead than you would ever be able to get if you only worked by when does this need to be completed instead of when am I going to complete this. It is a seismic shift in your entire approach to projects and productivity, and this view will help you navigate that, and we'll, we'll get there. Okay. And now we are back on track of how this plugin works from the due date distraction. Uh, but hopefully, you know, if, if that helps you out, give it a, a like. Let me know how that works for you. Uh, it, it has changed my life and it has changed the life of the people that I've worked with, too. So anyway, we're back from the distraction of the distraction and now we're back on track. So we've got this particular video and we've got the topic nailed down. We've got some tags for it. We've got the date that it's going to go live. And let's say this will go live on the 14th. And the film date is uh, today, 11 11. How lucky are we? Uh, so, this is a peek behind the scenes. Again, a little meta. And now, imagine you've got a whole bunch of these. And also, we can say, um, what stage in the process is it? Is it in scripting? Is this in filming? Is this in editing? So we can call this the pipeline, I guess, and we'll call this a list as well, which could be scripting, uh, again, filming, Okay, so those are the ones that it could be. And as of right now, we are in filming. And okay, so now we will go back to projects, right? That, that back. And now we see in the table view, we've got the pipeline is filming and topic and all that kind of stuff. And now let's see what we can do here. This button will add a new view. This is a way that you can organize and arrange all the rows in this table. So we already have the table view. So the board is going to be uh, a Kanban board, the calendar will be the thing you want to view by date, and a gallery is what it is. You see all of them all at the same time, which can be useful if you want to see your YouTube video uh, thumbnails and, and arrange your YouTube production that way. But basically, let's start with board, and the project is YouTube example, and the name will be... production pipeline for this view and then add view. Okay, so there we go. So this, it says no status because it's not smart enough to know which of the properties you want it to organize your information with. So basically, we are going to sort, well, include fields, column width, I always forget how this goes. So sort, add sort, pipeline. Oh no, sorting is vertical and then based on include fields. Nope. Nope. Okay, we have just jumped through time because I just spent about 10 minutes, no kidding, 
because I didn't remember this from back when I set this up and I just ran into this and took about 10 minutes for me again to figure this out. And I, I think this is kind of my niche is stumbling through Obsidian plugins with Jonathan Pritchard. So if this looks different, I'll walk you through what I just tried and then try to explain what what I did to make it work. So basically what I was looking to do was to make a column based on each stage in the pipeline. So when in the table we called it pipeline, we've got writing and filming, and we called this a list, and then we went back to the production pipeline, uh, I couldn't figure out how to make it do that. And the only two things that it would show me is the path or the name of each of these. So I created a video two, video three, and tried to change those here. But I noticed that the path and name were the only things to show up. And we've got the dates and the tags and or the, the list and tags and the, the list of this. And only the path and name would show up. So I thought, okay, what if I add a text only field and called it status? Because in the board view, it says status right here. So when I added status, I could do that. And voila. Okay, so make sure that however you name your pipeline and whatever stages it is, Make sure that it is a text status, and then it will filter based on that text. So video two has the editing field, and these don't have any fields. But if I click on video three, and I say that the status is in scripting, and save you see now there's scripting and editing and then the project plugin video the one that we're doing we are currently filming it and we'll save it and there we go so currently the sort is by alphabet but you can drag it this way and it will work so this is kind of the board view. And then based on, let's see, video three, uh, we will be filming that on the 23rd, but we'll be posting it on the 5th. And we could delete the pipeline, ignore that completely. And the tags would be self-help and cooking whatever all right and the topic will be frugal maybe or millionaire who cares there we go and we've got video two and the film date for that one will be a little bit after video three post don't worry about the timeline i'm not really paying attention to that and the posting date will be that one okay good and we'll save it. All right, because now I want to show you the calendar view. So here we can go calendar and we'll say filming, add view, and the date is the film date. So now we can check the month to see what days we are filming. And now you can say posting and make this a calendar and add the view there. And now we'll make that a month. And we can see that the date we're going to post video three is the 23rd. And now it is shown us, oh, I didn't change the date, so we'll say go live, and voila. So we see that we're filming video three on this date, the 23rd, and then posting it, we will be posting it the next month. 
So this will be December 5th is the day that we're posting video three, but we're going to film it on November 23rd. Right, does that, that make sense? So now you've got different ways to see the editorial calendars of when things were in production at the stage they were in production. So whenever I move it to filming from scripting, I can say, all right, we're going to be filming it on the 23rd. And you can see the different days and ways that your projects all fit together depending on what you need to do with it. So not only having a calendar view, but multiple calendar views filtered by each stage can give you a great insight, much like a Gantt chart. You can plan ahead and those tumbling timelines, but here you can keep track of when you did what and quickly cycle through each one as a saved view instead of having to change it here, right? So you could swap it here, but I like having it as a saved view up there, right? Okay, so then we can try our best to make a gallery. Uh, no promises on this one. Um, so when I hit command click, it opens this up and we'll say thumbnail is, we'll just say text. We'll see if that works. And then let's try to add a, an image to this. Insert attachment. And we'll say that this ocean is the thing. And then we will copy that, put that in the thumbnail, and then see if we can go back to projects, add a view. We'll just call it gallery to keep it simple. We'll create a gallery, add view, and the cover. So it's asking, okay, wh where's the cover image? So here we could select thumbnail and I did not put the thumbnail in properly for whatever it was. Uh, video three, was it? Yeah. So here, let's go back to here and see if we can open it to see where it is. Uh, copy, copy Obsidian URL and see if that will do the trick. And then we go back here, video three, thumbnail, no. So how about instead of that, we do this. All right, let's go hunting for All right, we just figured it out. Uh, putting in the link to the image instead of trying to embed it with the exclamation point. If we do the exclamation point, we go back to the view, it will not work. But if you add in the link to that image and just that one, right? So we, we can delete it from the body here because it's living over here. We haven't organized the attachments folder. But if you add just the direct link to where it lives in your Obsidian database, hey, look at that, we've got this right here. Then you can include the different fields like what date did it go live? All right, it went live on December 5th, 2023. And you could include the name or the status and the tags 
And this way you can have a really quick way of viewing these. And then for all the like the production pipeline and and then the gallery, you can sort them by either the name, the date in descending order or the topics. Uh, so how about we do go live and then the newest to oldest. So this would be the most recent to the oldest ones because this would be December 27th. And so it's always farther in the future to farther in the past. So all sorts of ways that you can sort these. You can add colors based on if the topic is has, well, has any of, let's say, productivity, then we can say this topic is going to be that toxic yellow. And voila, we've got that color right here. So then you can color code things based on any kind of topic or tags or whatever you want, and you can get as wild and crazy with it as you like. So that's basically the quick overview. And then as I promised, there are actually two things that drive me nuts. So if you can live with these, then this will be perfect for you. If you can't live with these two things, then it might make more sense to stick with the Kanban view for the Kanban view plugin uh, instead of using the Kanban view in here. And here it is, which is in the Kanban view. Again, there, there are two things here. Um, one, add note, we'll say example video four. So I want to drag and drop and it won't just drag and drop. We can drag and drop, reorder, the columns, but for some reason, it will not let me sort based on clicking and dragging something. So if I want to just manually rearrange things, it won't do it. You have to go through the sort and it will only be that thing. And, and you can have cascading sorting. You could say sort by category first and then by date. But you can't just say, well, arbitrarily, I like to have the thing I'm going to do next. If I had an on deck option where example video four would be on deck, which is kind of where all my ideas go, if if I have any idea for a video, I'm going to put it in on deck and it stays over here. Then I would drag it into scripting and then filming and editing and posting and all that kind of stuff, right? Okay. Well, the ones that I like the most, I keep near the top. So we can't drag and drop vertically to organize it that way. So that may not be a deal breaker for you. It is incredibly frustrating for me. And here's the second one, which is... Every time that I have a process, well, it's a process because it's repeatable. That's why they call it a pipeline. It is a system beginning to end. It's always these steps in this order for you to get the same result. It's a recipe. You're not going to skip steps. It's, it's always going to be there, which is why I don't understand why when you drag a card out of a column and there's now no longer anything in that column, that column goes away. There, there's no way to keep it there unless, unless you have something like this is the workaround where you create a note and now it's a placeholder that stays there and it will always be there as the kind of a visual distraction. It's not clean. It's not this step just waiting on you because editing. Placeholder two. 
Okay, so then you've got to title them differently. And again, you can't organize them. So your placeholder might have to be at the top. I, I don't know. Uh, so then there were different ways that I tried to filter it out and that kind of stuff. And I just could not figure out how to make this work. Um, so that is the uh, biggest challenge for me, really, are those two details with the, the Kanban view. Now, big picture, for me, the final conclusion on whether I would use this plugin on a day-to-day -day level, I gave it a fair shake of a couple months of doing this, but I wound up not using it all that much for my own process because having the multiple calendar views is incredible, but also I'm not quite that organized. I don't plan that far ahead of that many things and it doesn't really matter to me the filming versus editing versus posting process. Now, this would be incredibly valuable if I had an editing team and we were all collaborating on getting these out the door and I had more people that depended on knowing my process and where I was in that process. At that point, this would be golden. But again, the challenge is that Obsidian is pretty much a single player game, and that's why I love it. I don't need to share this with anybody outside of my vault. So if I needed to do project management with multiple people, I still wouldn't wind up using this plugin. So for me, the way that I work and the all over the place approach to things uh, this is not a plugin that I use on a daily basis, but I do use the Kanban plugin every single day, all day long, to know where projects are in the process. And to me, that's the more important detail than to be able to see the date views and the gallery, which is nice, or a table. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just need to know where it is, and then everything else lives inside the file that is moving through the, the Kanban view that stays even when there isn't a card inside of it. So there you go. Uh, now let's kick it to the outro. So if this helped you out, give it a like and that will let the YouTube gods know they should bless more people with this information. And I deeply appreciate it as well. Again, my name is Jonathan Pritchard from ICanReadMinds.com. And if you like this kind of thing, subscribe to the channel. And if you're not ready for that kind of commitment, I strongly suggest that you check out this next video that will help you make more sense out of Obsidian. That's it for now. My motto is, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.